So finally, I decided it was time to go to Nigeria and I got to the airport in Lagos. But while I was waiting for my luggage, I kept seeing plain clothes officers saying, Sir, we know, can you help us talk to your people outside? <laughs> And it soon dawned on me that there's a huge crowd waiting outside. But yes, I knew that friends and enthusiasts wanted to organize a, an arrival ceremony for me, but I had no idea that it would be thousands of people who walked out of the arrival hall and I was confronted with this Nigerians, young people in particular, with placards, and they just practically snatched me from the exit because I knew at that moment that we had to do this, that Nigeria was ready for a new level of revolutionary politicking. I opted not to have a speech at the airport because I knew that the airport could easily have shut down. So we, uh, we went into Lagos, followed by thousands and tons of, thousands of young people until we got to Ganifawemi Park in Ojota in Lagos. Because Ganifawemi, Chief Ganifawemi is actually one of my great, greatest heroes. <laughs> Just kept asking, let's, let's go now, let's take it back now. We then set up a town hall meeting for Ibadan. When we got there, we just couldn't believe how many people were waiting. Uh, a hall which was supposed to take about 700 people. Uh, there were 700 people sitting and like 300 people standing. And outside the hall, I heard there were a thousand people waiting and had to leave in frustration when they couldn't well, get inside. I, I think speak. we are very clear about what we are taking back and we are very clear about where we are giving it. This is a movement that is taking back not only our resources, it's taking back our dignity, it's taking back our land, it's taking back our people, it's taking back about our weak and making them strong. And it's taking back everything that we have lost and giving it back to the people. It's a people's movement, and that is why. Minister, it's great to see you. Uh, this is the minister of an outgoing regime. The Buhari regime will be kicked out of power come by, 2019. By your wish or by God's will? By the wish of the people of Nigeria. So because people the, people, fast, the people of Nigeria, so are you, your government has failed us. Dreaming. You are a it's not a dream. A Nobody even heard about some of you in you 2014. You until... know because you are inconsequential. I am consequential because I said I was... Not you, consequential. You, 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 are, you are rubbishing my generation by saying that I'm inconsequential. You are a daydreamer. You are a daydreamer. The Nigeria of the future is for dreamers like me. Okay. Yes. It, it's, it's, it's going to be for dreamers like me. This is this is this is the kind of arrogance, sir. And you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. Young people of Nigeria, 75 percent of them will see your back in 2019. Coming to Abuja is the next leg of our town hall meeting, interaction and engagement with Nigerians, and. It wasn't different. We arrived at the airport to warm reception by young people who had waited for me at the airport.
The reason is simple. In 2014 and 2015, we thought that he had integrity and the ability to run this country. But what he has done to us is so pathetic that one of his ministers yesterday or three days ago confronted me on a radio station and he said 75% of this country, Nigerian youth, are inconsequential. So our Zagwa in Abuja today is a consequential takeover of the federal capital. And up from there we went for another town hall meeting. But we have acres of manifestos that have been giving us promises. You can find them anywhere. We have leaders who lack capacity. We have people with analog thinking. The kind of political consciousness that you are seeing today amongst even young people who usually are complacent, they come from the context in which these stories are written because they need very solid evidence to show that a story that I've read is actually doing damage to society either politically, culturally, socially, and in every ramification that you can think about. What about the love that they promised us? What about the care that they promised us? They have, they have disappointed us. You know, we have, this country is broken today, and the people of Nigeria are broke. I do not believe that the people who are proposing restructuring are honest. And that's why that the first restructuring that has to happen in Nigeria is an economic restructuring of the country where people actually enjoy the resources of their country. After Abuja, I decided that we should go to Kano. And the reason we went to Kano was because everybody said Kano was no-go area. I This is the first palace I'm entering since I started campaigning five weeks ago. You have shown yourself to be a disruptor. You have disrupted the economic system in this country by putting away people who were thieves in our banking system. I also want to disrupt the political space in Nigeria. I am running to become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 2019. And I want to start So we left Kano, drove again for several hours to Kaduna and came to a town hall meeting at Arewa House. <laughs> the interesting thing is that uh, Kaduna city is a, or state is a very polarized state. You know, people from Northern Kaduna and Southern Kaduna are Christians and Muslims and in some cases they actually don't see eye to eye. So, But here it was in this hall, Arewa Hall, the hall was filled to the brim. Interestingly, by women. So you had the Christians, the Muslims, and all of it, all of these people coming together because of one purpose, uh, to rescue and take Nigeria back from the old divisive politicians that have uh, uh, destroyed the country. Where we started is, they said we cannot go to Kano, that you dare not go to Kano because it's President Buhari's home. We came to Kano. We went there today. We went to see the Emir. People were hailing us on the street. Please do not look back. Kaduna is going to happen. If we join hands together, we will no longer need to. Assalamu alaikum. Well done. I can understand. So this is this government. Truly, honestly, they're doing their best. But we just look, your best is not good enough. So give chance to those who can. Assalamu alaikum, sir.
Wow. The Sahara Reporters publisher is now running for president. Ah, for which platform? We are still working on a coalition of parties, but we've been going around. I, which coalition of parties? We have a bunch of parties that we're talking to. We want to form a model. Why worry about a bunch of parties? Why mm. not go to the real party? Which is the party real party? Of change. That's the PRP. political party in PRP. Nigeria. Okay, so, <laughs> so now we are talking. <laughs> From Penn Cinema area of Agege, it is the place where you can find people along the rail line. Um, it was coincidental that the only railway system in Nigeria was arriving at the time we got there, and it was like people from around the country, and we met uh, a number of beggars who are from Kano, Jigawa. And I think they said they're also from Adamawa, who told us that um, if only governments could give them just small loans, uh, they would look back home and they kept saying, we want to send our children to school. We want to send our children to school. All right. So, so, so you want to send your children to school? It was shocking because the impression you get when you go to, when they talk about the northern part of the country is that people don't want to go to school. But these people want to send their children to school. They want to have their own life. And contrary to the impression being created that they don't want to go home, they actually want to leave Lagos. If only they can be guaranteed of some small business loan that they can use in certain of businesses that can make their lives better. Uh, of course, it's a very intense place, and I felt like Nigerian leaders, while preparing for office, never, never even attempt to reach out to these people. They prefer to package and brand in a rice and some tokens and send to them. They don't even know what they need, sir. It will be the first time you see a president that's going to construction sites to check up on construction. Wouldn't you like that? Exactly. Well, that's to me. So for me, this is like a need assessment tour to talk to people, ordinary people, ordinary people, and ask them, what do you really want? What do you want for yourself in a better Nigeria? And that's what you heard from a beggar, and you heard from another woman who was really, really emotional. Who wants a younger person like you people that have been doing something that's better? You know what young, young people are need? Look yeah. at all these, all these graduates. Yeah. There's nothing for them. But We're not joking. We need you. Thank you. I'm saying with my outside hands, we need you. Thank God you. bless you. Thank you. Thank you. So shall it be. Thank you. It will happen like that. It will. You are going great. You are going greater Thank than you. this. Thank you. We need you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, I couldn't say anything. She was very emotional about the future. She wanted a different future and uh, she didn't think that the existing political structures or the existing policy status in the country can help her. Young lawyers, be prepared for the job of being prosecutors to the Federal Republic of Nigeria because there's going to be a lot of prosecutions to be made over the destruction and the stealing of our national commonwealth. Thank you very much. I'll see you 2019. Well, before we went to Weary, um, we had uh, some encounters. We went to eat um, at a place in front of ShopRite in Lagos. And uh, as we were eating there, a lot of young people who had heard about our campaign and my person would mill it around us. 
you're asking questions about what the plans were for Nigeria in the future under a Shore presidency, and we're talking. And my life is so, so, so frustrating. Yes, I'm living a miserable life. And the chief security officer came charging at us. Why would he stop what he's doing? So what? No, he can't stop. No, 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 this is a public place. These are Nigerians. And I said to him, I said, this is a place maintained by public patronage. Why are you so um, aggressive? Well, it's obvious that he wanted to do what uh, appropriate musician Fela Kuti used to call Pawa Show. And uh, Pawa Show, he did, before he knew it, he had called the DP of a nearby police precinct and they sent policemen to arrest us. <laughs> Listen to me. Because you think that the Nigerian police is the police of yesterday where people can just ask them to do whatever they like. And journalists can't do their job. And then you broke our camera. Too. When we are exercising our right, then you go and bring a police officer who doesn't know the difference between a private space and a public space. There must be proper orientation and education of the police force. No police officer should protect a private interest over a public interest. Never. Bad. My lawyer actually Bad. works for my opponent. <laughs> my lawyer works for Buhari. <laughs> We're headed back on track on the campaign trail again. It's just a short uh, police issue. It's resolved. There's no reason to be afraid, no reason to fret. Take it back. Take it Take back. My pleasure to be in your midst today in the land of the rising sun. What is lacking is sincerity of purpose. And we are reminding the man in Oweri that there's no vacancy in Asso Rock in 2023 for the people like him. Yes. I will not be the president that is commissioning a model of a second Niger bridge or the picture of a second Niger bridge. I won't even come and commission the bridge. I want it to be completed and you start riding on it. That's the commissioning of it. We just want our nation back from them. So once again, you can say, take it back. Take it back. I want to hear you. Take it back. you. Take it back. Hear you. Take it back. Hear you. Take it back. Take it back. Thank you. Take it back. See. Take it back. Take it back. Thank you. Take it back. See. On that day, we are going to make a generational statement that the young people of this country are tired and no longer accepting of the kind of leadership that has put us down for the last 58 years of Nigeria's existence. The lazy ones are the ones who were voted into office, who could not appoint their ministers for six months. Those are the lazy people of Nigeria. The ones that are using Nigeria and the ones that are not lazy must teach the lazy ones a lesson in 2019. Thank you. Hello. Let me just say we have Omoyele uh, show with us in the studio already. Uh, publisher Sahara Reporters. Online. Okay, you can verify that I have almost 30 years now of fighting on the side of what is right. So when it was inconvenient to stand on the side of what is right, I did it.
Last thing I did was to go to my hometown, Peribo, <laughs> and this one got to be the craziest. I have never seen my hometown lit up like that before. Everybody we saw one of the religion one. Hmm. Where are you Muslim or Christian? Oh, Christian. Wow. They didn't ask our ethnicity. So we we'll break it down for one but I said money. One so free go money. I'm not you didn't come on this shit. But they really got to say let's say. Omo Buhari, London, not in Lossy School. She's a money now, in Lossy School in London. 